Hey addicts, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. I'm Nick Popov and today we're gonna to be talking about summer steelhead and trout bead fishing. The ins and outs of bead fishing, what size of beads, what colors of beads, the gamut. So if you guys like these videos and you wanna see more of them, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up, go down here and tap the subscribe button and the video's coming at you right now. So steelhead fishing with beads for summer steelhead and trout, it can be overwhelming. Lots of different colors, lots of different rods, lots of different reels. We're gonna make this quick and easy and simple for you so you can get out there and catch more fish. So starting with our normal bobber stop. So for those of you that haven't seen it before, we have a bobber stop. It's just a piece of braided line tied in and that's gonna allow you to gauge your depth. Then it goes to a bobber stop bead a corky and all that does is it stops up against your bobber stop so you can adjust the depth and then it goes to your float okay and then i have one more bobber stop bead down here to stop it and just to protect my knot and then i you can go to any weight you can use a dave's tangle free you can use there's lots of different styles of weight for this type of fishing i'm not trying to drag my i'm not trying to drag my weight on the bottom like you would typically bobber dogging I am trying to keep my weight suspended and allow my, my bead, since it's such low water, I'm trying to keep all of my terminal tackle away from the fish. So I'm trying to keep this above the fish. So I'm trying to keep this weight above the fish and my gear down to the fish. So down to the weight, whatever weight you choose. I have an inline weight just like this because this weight technically is never really gonna hit the bottom. Now next, I go to let me put this down here. I'm gonna go to this leader right here. Now this leader has a bead tied in line right here, as you can see, right where my finger is there. And it's got about two and a half finger spacing between the hook and that bead. And this bead is very vital. It's, it's extremely important for what I'm gonna show you here and, and bead fishing in particular. So, and then, for these, in this low clear water, I really like a longer leader. So I try to fish, you know, anywhere from five to six feet. I don't, I try not to go much over six feet because it just becomes a lot to cast and it can be kind of cumbersome to cast and, and kind of annoying because you get tangled up a lot. All right, next for the meat and potatoes is the bead fishing. Now this is where it can get a little overwhelming and a little cumbersome for people. Is there so many colors? I mean, look at that. There's oranges, pinks, chartreuses, pink and white. You know, it just, there's a ton of different colors, a ton of different types of beads and a ton of different companies that make them. In my opinion, there's no, no real bead one better than the other, but it's about the color of that day or that fishery that you're fishing that's gonna make the difference. So um, going through and finding the bead that you like to fish is important. Um, and then sticking to that brand and just find the colors that work for you. So we have a low clear scenario here. Now in, in these, salmon and steelhead come up the river to spawn and they're typically feeding, you know, when the things they do eat, there's always things coming down the river, bugs and, you know, eggs and trout spawn and salmon spawn. And, and so steelhead will feed on those. And that's what this bead is emulating is a basically a trout egg. I mean, excuse me, a steelhead egg or a salmon egg that had spawned and is now coming down the river. And there's multiple different stages of eggs. There's like a fresh egg, which is a real bright, bright orange like this, right? So something that it resembles a very fresh egg, just freshly laid out of the fish. And then there's like dead egg patterns where as they lay it, some of the eggs don't make it and they roll down the river and they're gonna be a white color, kind of like an opaque or a white. So these bead companies have gone and created all the kind of different stages of, of the different egg spawn. And they've also gone through and created a lot of different ones. You're gonna see pinks and chartreuses and, and, and there's things like sucker egg imitations and things like that. So it can be very overwhelming. I always say start with something that looks very similar to a salmon egg. And the more you fish your river that you're fishing, the more you're gonna get your bead dialed to what your, you know, your fish, or the fish in your river system are gonna feed on or eat better than the other. So for me, I'm gonna start out with something that we're, we're pretty early in the season. Um, you know, if there are, are 
spawning fish in here, they're probably pretty recent. So I'm gonna go with a smaller bead, a 10 millimeter, um, which is a bead about this size here. So there's lots of different colors. There's six millimeter, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, all the way up to 20 millimeters. Um, these are lured beads. So these have a rubber coating around a hard bead. It's pretty dang cool for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, there's typically, there's two different types of beads. Typically a hard bead, which is actually a hard plastic. And then there's a soft bead that like BNR soft beads like this. Um, and I use a lot of those as well. Now a soft bead is gonna be completely squishy like an egg. And then you have the hybrid of the two. This is a hard bead inside of a soft shell um, and it kind of emulates an egg. So when they chew on it, it's a little bit natural to them and they hang on to it a little bit longer in my opinion. So these lured beads are awesome. I love them, I use them all the time. Uh, let's see here, let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys. So, you guys remember earlier I showed you this hook, got my must out hook, and then that little inline bead there, right? So that bead is fixed with a knot tied in place. It's a very tight knot. And I believe we have a video that shows you how to tie this knot here, and I can put the link in the description below as well. So next, we are gonna thread our bead. So I'm going with a 10 millimeter bead, and the reason I'm choosing this bead is number one, it's, it's not super aggressive and bright pink or bright fluorescent orange, and it's also gonna emulate probably a very similar size to a steelhead egg or a, you know maybe a large cutthroat egg or something of that nature. Um, so I'm gonna thread this bead on. Now this just has a little hole, so I'm just gonna thread this bead right here, and I thread my line through and I'm gonna slide that bead all the way down to my fixed bead here now as you can see that fixed bead that bead just shoves right up against there now that bead can't go over there and I'm gonna explain why this is so important in my opinion now other bead fishermen may have their opinions but in my opinion when you fish this fixed bead like this with with a uh, a, like a lured bead that can't go over that bead is what happens is those fish grab it you set the hook and when you pull through that hook just grabs there right in the corner of their mouth and your bead stays in place now with a hard bead that you would typically peg in the with the hard bead they have a piece of like toothpick that'll go right through that bead there and then it, they'll set it you know whatever distance away from their hook they want well I feel like when you set the hook and your bead slides down to your to the eye of your hook, well now there's a pivot point for that fish to pivot on and kind of shake that hook loose and it just puts more stress on the fish and you end up losing more fish. So this in my opinion, you're gonna hook and land more fish with this type setup. So then we're gonna take our leader here, our six foot leader, and we are going to tie it onto our weight just like so. I just do a normal fisherman's knot for this. With light line, a normal fisherman's knot, you can get away with it. Just make sure when you're fishing fluorocarbon that you wet that line down so it doesn't burn the line. Put my tag in, keep my little tag in there. Make sure you guys don't throw your tag ins in the water. Just put them and take them home with you. Okay, now I'm gonna add a split shot about two feet down from my original weight. And this split shot and then I'm gonna go about another two feet and I'm gonna add another one. Now this is not, you don't have to do this, but your split shots are gonna be what is getting you down to the fish. So the big weight is used for casting and you know castability and these split shots are gonna be what actually sinks down and gets down into the water column. So I have about, we have our float with our beads down to our weight. Two feet below our weight, we got our split shot. Two feet below that, we got our other split shot. And then two feet below that, we have our fish killer.
right guys, so I'm just gonna give you a quick little demonstration on how to cast this and how to fish it. I'm not gonna get super in depth because we do have lots of other videos out there if you guys wanna see us fishing in this style of setup. But I'm gonna make this cast now. The cool thing about bead fishing is you want that bead floating kind of naturally through there. So you typically want some current and you can fish it in fast current to slow current. It doesn't really matter. You just want that bead naturally floating down river. So I am gonna do the same type thing I was doing with my jig. I'm gonna fire this out there and I'm gonna get it right over there on that current seam. And I cast it up river slightly. And remember my big weight is never on the bottom. So my big weight is, you know, a foot six inches below my bobber. And then I have my leader doing all the work. So, and now I'm just mending slightly, trying to keep as much line off the water. Because remember, we have really low water conditions right now. And so you got to help that bobber get down. If you've got a bunch of line laying on the water, it's going to pull you right out of the current and you're not going to be fishing it properly. So you're just allowing that bobber to work right downstream through the entire section there. Once it gets below you, you start to let line just like you would with any other bobber setup. All right, guys, one more. Let's see if I can catch one. One more. All right, once again, I cast, I flip my bail, and I'm just kind of keeping as much line off the water as I can. You don't want to have a bunch of line on the water. It's going to pull you right out of the zone. So as you can see, I'm just letting that bobber do the work, trying to keep as much line as I can up off the water. Now there's two types of bites you're going to get when you're bobber and bead fishing. One, it's going to look like a trout bite. It's just going to go doink, doink, doink. Your bobber's just going to barely go under, do, 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 like a trout would do. You want to reel down and set the hook on that because that's how a steelhead, that's a steelhead chasing it down river and eating it and basically swimming at the same current as your bobber's moving. And the other one, your bobber's just gonna kind of give it a little bounce and just go under, just like a, any other bobber would. You wanna reel first. Most important thing, I mean, the biggest thing I see guys do with beads is when they the bobber goes under, they just set the hook as hard as they can. Well, when they do that, you just pull it away from the fish because you got so much leader, so much line, so much everything that you just tear it right out or pull it right away from the fish. I always tell, Point your rod at the bobber, reel as fast as you can until you feel tension, and then set the hook. All right, guys. Well, that is the gist of the low water bobber and bead setup. I hope you guys like this. Don't forget, make sure you guys give us a big thumbs up. Go down here, hit the subscribe button, and share this to your friends and family, and we'll see you guys on the water soon.